What's up math fans? Hopefully you've already seen the video on how to solve quadratic equations. So now you can move on to a little more difficult. Um, I say it's difficult because it's a few extra steps, but it's really not that difficult. If you understood the first one, you'll easily understand this one. All right. So when I first taught it, I taught a quadratic equation as um, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. This is how I want my quadratic to look. Couple of reasons why. Number one is, uh, well, here's a hint. If you see the highest exponent is a two, you know it's quadratic, all right? And I want it equal to zero so that I can use what I call the zero product property, meaning when I factor it and the factors multiply to give me zero, one of those factors must be equal to zero. That's when I do my T-chart and I solve, all right? So I need it equal to zero, otherwise I can't factor it. You can't have a number here. There's a number here, it's way too hard to solve. For example, A times B equals 12. A could be three, four, two, it's too confusing. But for sure, if I have A times B equals zero, I know for sure either A is zero or B is zero. That's the zero product property, all right? So I need, um, I need my stuff in standard form, and if it's not, you're gonna see what to do. So if you look at number one, it doesn't even look like a quadratic. So you're probably asking, um, what do you, why is this even one of the questions? Well, it is. First thing you want to do is distribute. If you see parentheses, people say, oh, PEMDAS, do the parentheses. You're not really doing the parentheses because PEMDAS says do what's inside the parentheses and you can't combine X and three. Please don't tell me that's three X, it's not. So the best I can do is to get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to distribute. So x times x is 2x, right? No, it's x squared. Please stop making that mistake. x squared, x times three, there's my 3x. Don't forget that's positive 3x, and that equals 40. Now I ask myself, does it look like a quadratic in standard form? No, I want it equal to zero, and it's not. So how could I make a 40 equal to zero mathematically? Don't tell me that you raised the four. Mathematically, you do the inverse. So I'm gonna subtract 40, and of course, whatever you do to one side of an equation to keep the balance, you must do it to the other side. So that is mathematically sound. And now 40 minus 40 is zero. And everything else is on the left side. So it looks like what I'm used to in my original video. X squared plus, what is this, 43? No, 37, right? No, they're not like terms. Do not combine them. Write what you see. I see plus 3x. I see minus 40 equals zero, okay? The example I'm doing brings the number to the other side. Sometimes there's an x value here, so then I would be able to combine it. Sometimes there's an x squared value, so I would line it up with my x squared value and I might be able to combine it. In this case, I'm not, but that's not always the case. So this looks like something I can handle using some product. What times what is negative 40 and also adds to three? Let's see, 20 and two, no. Uh, eight and five, or maybe 10 and four? I think it's x plus eight and x minus five. My bigger factor gets the middle sign. So now I do my t-chart and x plus eight equals zero, or the other one, x minus five equals zero. That's the zero product property. Either this or this equals zero. Here I can subtract eight on both sides and x equals negative eight. Here I add five to both sides of the equation and x equals five, two solutions, one positive, one negative. If this was a word problem, I would go back and figure out, does it make sense to have a negative answer? Probably not, but this wasn't a word problem, so I'm gonna assume they both work. On your own time, do the check to make sure. How do you check? Take one answer at a time. See if five works, plug it in. Five times five plus three, guess what? Five times five plus three is eight. Five times eight is 40, we're good. Do the same thing with negative eight, you'll be good. Next, what do I do when I have two fractions equal to each other? That's called a proportion. Hopefully you learned that because I haven't done it recently, but I have done proportions before, and I know to cross multiply. So let's do that. This is a y, this is a y plus three. Even though there's no parentheses there, it's the quantity of y plus three. Whenever you see a fraction, the numerator kind of makes it a known parentheses. So I got y times y plus three equals three times six. 
This is a good time to pause it and do it on your own. Keep going, I'll do it with you. I got y squared plus 3y equals 18. Same situation as over there, I need it in standard form. So I'm gonna do inverse, subtract 18 on both sides. No like terms to combine, so I just write what I see. y squared plus 3y minus 18 equals zero. Easy, sum product. What multiplies to negative eight and adds to positive three? Uh, let's see, nine and two, six and three, 18 and one. Uh, I'm gonna go with six and three. Y plus six, Y minus three. Then I have my T chart. <clears throat> y plus six equals zero, or Y minus three equals zero. Subtract six, subtract six. Y equals negative six, or Add three, add three, and y equals three. Two answers. Again, you should go back and check. Not a word problem, so I could probably accept both positive and negative answers, but it gets interesting. Sometimes when the variable is in the denominator, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it works out to be zero down here, and you can't get a zero down there. But in this case, looks like it's gonna work. I will leave the check up to you. Let's go to the last one. This one is based on an interesting story. It's a very popular test question. Test question will say, um, they'll tell you a little story, usually about a, a ball being thrown in the air. Baseball player hits a ball, something like that. So you imagine the path of the ball it goes up, peaks, comes back down. It's not a straight line, it is a parabola. What's a parabola? You'll see in another video when I graph these equations. Right now, all I know is that I see squared, I know it's probably a quadratic. So what else do you know? H stands for height, T stands for time. So the higher the ball goes, the more time goes by. Or actually, I said that backwards. The more time goes by, the higher the ball goes. Then it peaks, the more time goes by, now the, the ball starts coming back down. So the question might say, here's the equation that maps the path of the ball that goes up and then back down. What or how much time has gone by when height is four? So let's say I'm six feet, I would catch a ball right around here, that's about four feet. So basically they're saying, how long does it take for me to catch a fly ball? All right, what do you mean? You need to know time? They're basically, that's a whole long story telling you solve for T. So I'm gonna do that. I have, uh, H is four, so I'm gonna plug in a four right here. I have four equals negative 16 T squared plus 64 T plus four, okay? You follow me so far? This looks like a quadratic, but it's not equal to zero. I need this equal to zero. Easy enough, get rid of the four. Minus four, minus four. Look, I have like terms this time. Cancel and the cancel. So now, zero on this side, equal sign, everything else drops down. Negative 16t squared plus 64t. Looks like a very easy quadratic. Can you use some product? Perhaps, but guess what I've been skipping? Always, always, always look for the GCF first. So this is a good example of GCF. Is there a number that goes into both? Yes. Also, there's a letter that goes into both. So here my GCF would be um, negative 16t. And then I just need one set of parentheses. If I factor out negative 16 from here and also t from here, the only thing that's left is t. Because negative 16t times t would give me back negative 16 t squared. Now, if I pull out a negative 16 from 64, that leaves me with negative four, because negative times negative is positive. 16 times four is 64. t times no variable gives you back t. So there you go. Now it's a funny looking t chart, but it's still a t chart. Watch this. Either negative 16 t equals zero, or t minus four equals zero. Okay, then it's a real easy solution. Uh, divide by negative 16 on both sides. And here I would add four on both sides. So what's my answer? Either t equals zero divided by anything is zero, or t equals four. I remember what I said about a word problem. Does it make sense? Time is zero, no way. That means the ball just got hit. That means the guy, the batter was also four, uh, six feet tall, hit it at about four feet goes up, comes back down, and after four seconds, then I caught the ball, all right? So this time I would reject 
a silly answer and only have one that makes sense. Thanks for watching. See ya.